Hello, hello. Welcome to my channel. My name is Jade. I am the owner and founder of Oud Embroidery, a shop on Etsy making embroidery and fabric art. I'm based in Chicago, Illinois, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to embroider using some basic stitches, figuring out the basics of how to embroider and making it look as good as you possibly can. I'm gonna be teaching you some tips and tricks and simple stitches that I usually include in all of my kits. This is just like a nice little visual thing um, for you to try and <laughs> figure out learning stitches, uh, especially if like looking at uh, 2D tutorials for how to do certain stitches uh, is not your jam. It certainly is not mine. Um, so I've got my candle lit, I've got my coffee warm, uh, I've got all of my supplies and I'm ready to go. So this is what you're gonna need. I usually include all, I do include all of these, all of these items in my kits. I have two pieces of fabric, uh, your hoop, your embroidery floss. I usually like DMC embroidery floss. We've got a lot of colors today, we're gonna go for it. We've got needles. And then these are the things that I don't normally include in the kits, but I recommend on having on hand, I have a pair of pliers and a screwdriver, a pair of scissors, a needle minder, and a little friction pen. I'll link to where you can find these down below, these pens specifically. They're on Amazon, and it's the only place I can find them, but they're the only ones I like, which is very annoying, so I'll link these below. I also have a little thread jar um, to like save scraps and stuff because we are about sustainability here. Cool, let's jump right into it. So we can put one of these pieces of fabric to the side because we're going to use it for the backing piece. I usually just like to use a scrap piece of fabric or a piece of fabric that I know I won't use for the face of an embroidery just to save on waste um, because textile waste is bad um, and it's very hard to avoid. So these are the ways that I like to try to avoid it. So taking your good piece of fabric. I am working with Essex Linen today, um, but I also really like Kona Cotton. You can find these at any Joann's or Michael's. There are also like small little mom and pop shops if you want to support small businesses as well to find these fabrics if you are just working off of a pattern. Um, but I include all these in the kits. Um, and then I have my cute little hoop. This is an eight inch hoop. I don't normally work with the size, but we're creating a sampler today and I wanted enough space for that for you guys. We're gonna do it backwards first because this is typically how I trace a pattern um, or like to draw on the fabric. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your smaller hoop, the one without the screw, place it on top and then put your big hoop on the bottom. And you're just gonna try and like make that centered as possible. You're just gonna press it down like that. Easy. Um, so now that's all in there. Kind of like tighten the edges a little bit, tighten it as much as you can. And then when it's all like kind of there, you're gonna notice that like it's still kind of loose. Um, so take, you can try and like finger tighten for a little bit and just like pull up as you go. I'm just pulling the edges, uh, making sure nothing is gonna pop out like that. <laughs> of course, as I'm explaining it, it happens to me. Um, so that just means I needed to tighten the screw a little bit more. It's also helpful if you iron the fabric first but if there is already a pattern drawn on, like in one of my kits, don't do that because uh, I use friction pen and that comes off with heat from an iron. So if you want to keep the pattern on it, don't do that beforehand. Just make it as tight as possible. Um, so I'm just taking inside here, there is a little uh, Phillips head screw, if you can see that. And uh, I usually just take a screwdriver. I hold the little nut at the end <laughs> as much as I can. If your hoop does not have a little screw with, you know, a little indentation for Phillips or flat head screwdriver, you can just use a pair of pliers and tighten it that way as well. Um, like I said, this isn't necessary. I just find it very helpful for keeping the fabric as tight as possible. But now that's, that's pretty tight, right? Um, but I'm gonna keep tightening it a little bit more because we want it to sound like a drum. Okay, that's pretty good, I'd say. Um, so now I've got that all tight in there. If you can hear, 
that sounds like a drum, which is the tightness level that you want. So now that's all set, with front side up. Um, and then you're just gonna take your good little marker. Um, and usually if I'm working off a pattern, I go off of uh, a screen. So usually I'll like draw my patterns in Procreate and then I just trace uh, the pattern from my iPad screen on full brightness um, in kind of as dark a setting as possible and just kind of trace it out. Um, but I also like the method of printing it, um, printing out your design and then cutting it out, taping it to the hoop. So like you would tape it along these edges here and just like place it up to a window so that you could see the design through it. Uh, I find that to be very clear, um, but if you're against paper waste, work with the screen. Um, you can also do that with a uh, laptop as well. Um, that's also nice because then you're not like worried about <laughs> the design moving under you with the touch screen of whatever device you may be using. That's just kind of the easiest route uh, for me because then I'm not like sending files everywhere. So now you've got this, you're all set. I'm going to make the little sampler and draw on here. Um, and the reason why I had you put this in like upside down, because normally it would like sit like this, right? Like that's the way that you would stitch on it. Um, but the reason I had you do this upside down is because this lays flat against the table or whatever surface you're going to be drawing on, the window, the screen, whatever, because this is not super awesome to draw on. You can't apply a lot of pressure and get like super uh, stable. So uh, flat side up and then it'll go from there. I will see you on the flip side. All right, so now I have all these drawn on. As you can see, we've got a good number of stitches to try and learn today. Before we start though, let's talk about uh, threading your needle and dealing with embroidery floss. Um, embroidery floss is kind of different from uh, just regular sewing thread. First of all, it doesn't usually come out on a spool. It can of sorts sometimes, um, but usually they come in skeins like this. So let's take this one, for example. And you're gonna see at the end here, there's, it like splits into a bunch of different threads. Um, there is uh, six threads per strand of floss, if that makes sense. So this is like a full strand. It has six strands within it. And usually I like to stitch with uh, two strands. Um, so to start with, we're gonna take this one. It's DMC 336. If you like this color, now you know where to find it. And you can get embroidery floss at any craft store, pretty much. There are places online as well, small businesses. So plenty of places to get it. Um, so you're gonna take this and usually i like to have embroidery floss on a bobbin or a little clothespin uh, just to keep it all straight but these were all like half used skeins of embroidery floss and so i wanted to try and use them um since i didn't put them on bobbins i usually use them for kits um but i don't have anything lined up for them right now so uh you're gonna take it and you're gonna very carefully kind of pull Usually I like to pull it to the length uh, double of what my arm is. So going from the tip of my finger to kind of the middle of my chest. So now that I have this long thread, <laughs> long uh, part of the skein, I'm going to chop it right here with my little snips. I got these from Etsy, by the way, you can find them uh, there. I can't remember the name of the shop, but I will link them down below where I found them. Now that you have this like double arms length, is what I like to call it. You're going to take just one of these guys, and you can see, yeah, just one, and very carefully kind of pull it from the rest. You're just gonna kind of like skin the rest of the strands off of it, like so. So it all just kind of like bunches up, like that. Going slow, going careful. Don't pull more than one strand at a time. I've learned the hard way. It all just kind of gets stuck on each other unless you're going really slow and pulling it very carefully apart. Like you can't skin it apart, which is very annoying. Um, so now you have this one strand, yay. Um, and then you're going to take the two ends I usually like to snip the ends just to, you know, keep it as clear as possible. And then you're gonna take your needle. This is a 
this classic embroidery needle usually my kits i give you a size nine uh bohen embroidery needle i think this is what this is i can't remember though um but so you're going to take the thread and you're going to put it through the eye of the needle this is honestly the most tedious part um but i'm going to try and make it as as little tedious as possible if that makes sense i don't know if that was english um but so now that you've put it through the eye of the needle, if you struggle with this, there are needle threaders that you can find. I find those really easy to use. Um, they tend to break on me a lot, but I'm also like, using it a lot because this is what I do all day, every day. So I just find it easier to not, but if you uh, struggle with uh, hand stability, um, that might be a good investment as well. They're usually really cheap and you can get a couple of good ones. Um, but now you have this threaded through. You have like a smaller end and like the nice long end. And on this end, you have a loop. So you're going to take your needle and thread. And then in order to keep the small end of your thread from coming out of the needle while you stitch, it happens all the time and it's the worst thing on the planet. I recently found out there's a trick to keeping it in place and I'm about to teach it to you. So you're going to take the two strands, pull them across your thumb um, or any surface uh, that you want. If you're scared of pricking your thumb, that's totally fine. Um, you can kind of do it on a table. Um, I usually prefer my thumb because I can see it a little easier. Um, but then you're just going to take the needle and put it through the strands. So now you can see the needle is like halfway between both of these strands and then you're just going to take the needle and pull it through. And now the thread isn't going anywhere because you just sewed through it and now it's just living its own little life but no matter how hard I pull, unless you pull really hard, don't pull really hard because then you'll like break the thread. Um, but like. You know, it'll withstand the pull through of any typical stitch. And now you're ready to go. Your needle is all threaded. Cool. So now we're gonna learn how to start your thread. Let's uh, switch out the fabric. And by that, I mean like putting it the right way. I mean, you can stitch it the wrong way. It's just, it can be annoying to do that with the hoop getting in the way because one hoop is smaller than the other and um, that can just be annoying. So you're just gonna flip it. You're gonna put the smaller hoop on the bottom and the bigger hoop on top and do kind of the same thing you did earlier. Uh, place it down, pull it tight, all of that jazz. <laughs> Oh yeah. So now that this is actually set the right way and we are ready to stitch, let's take our thread. Um, I'll just take it from here. This means nothing. This is just like simply how to start your thread um, and to get going and make sure that it's as stable as possible. So take your needle, go from the back of the fabric to the front and you're gonna make like a tiny little stitch, just kind of like that. And then go from the front to the back Pull through. So now you have this little loop, if you don't pull all the way through, which don't do. You have this little loop and you're gonna take your needle and just kind of put it through the loop. And voila, you've got a nice tight start to your thread without having to learn how to knot off, which is also incredibly tedious and annoying. So now that's all set to go. And let's say you make like You've made your stitches, you're done with your thread, um, or your thread is almost done, that can happen too. I'm just making a simple stitch here um, to show you how to end your thread. I just made a simple stitch from the back to the front and then from the front to the back again. And then you're going to take this and you're going to kind of loop it through that little stitch I made. You can kind of put it wherever, just anywhere that you have yet another loop. So now you have a loop and then you are going to basically do a French knot, which is what I'm going to teach you later, but this isn't a decorative French knot, so it doesn't need to be pretty. Um, you are going to take your needle, put it through the loop. You're gonna put it through the loop, kind of like that, and then wrap it a couple of times. Usually like three is the magic number. So it's in the loop, 
One, two, three. Now it's all wrapped, you can see. And you're just going to pull the needle through and keep the fabric tight while you are pulling it, um, or not the fabric, the, uh, the excess thread. Keep it tight while you're pulling it through. Great. So now you have an ugly little French knot. Um, <laughs> she's not ugly, she's just got character. She's got a lot of excess in her. Um, but there you have it. And so that is set to go. And then you can do one more French knot just to uh, knot off the end of your thread if you want to save this thread for later. So like if you have a lot of thread left on your last little bit that you were finishing up, um, you can save it for another project. So you're gonna take, you're gonna take the thread Make another French knot. So take it, put the needle behind the thread, and then loop it three times. One, two, three. Pull it through, keeping the excess uh, out of the way. And then you're gonna kind of make the knot like a little bit above where that is, if you can see. Um, so we are going to just do a cute little boop. So now she's set to go. You're gonna cut this, ta-da. And now you have a uh, two strand embroidery floss ready to go for the next time. So you can just make a stitch as you normally would for like starting a new piece of thread and you already have like a ready-made loop. So you would just like do what we did at the start, make that little loop and like put it through and all of that and make that knot. That's usually how I do it. I'm sure there are other ways to do it. Um, you can also knot it off manually if you feel like that is, like you have more control over that. No, no drama, um, no worries with that. Um, this is just what I have found to be the simplest and the most conservative of my materials um, and making sure that I am using only what is needed. Cool. So now we know how to split strands. We know how to start uh stitching we know how to finish up a stitch we know how to keep your fabric tight we know how to thread your needle and keep it stable and uh, we know how to draw on a pattern so that is all the stuff that you need to really get started um, and be able to stitch whatever you want please watch my next videos for learning how to do all of these different stitches we've got a lot on our plate um and we're gonna blow through them. It's going to be great. It's going to be a good time and we're going to have so much fun and it's going to be calming um, and we're going to learn something new. So stay tuned for that. So some time has passed. This is obviously done a couple hours later and she's set. Um, so now I'm going to teach you how to finish an embroidery hoop. I mean, there are basically three different ways that I like. These aren't the only ways. Um, one of the ways that I don't typically do, um, but a lot of people do is, um, taking like a piece of felt and then like using a blanket stitch to finish that. I don't typically do that just cause that's more sewing than I feel like doing usually. And uh, I'm able to use uh, scrap thread, scrap fabric um, in the ways that I typically like to finish off embroidery. So um, we have this guy all done and ready to go. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, mark out where this, uh, where uh, the ends are gonna be. So the way that I like to do that is I like to take like a corner and like fold it all the way over to the hoop and make it as tight as possible to the base. And then I'm gonna take my little uh, friction pen. This one's in pink. Um, and I'm going to uh, draw out where the base of the hoop sits. And I'm gonna do that just kind of like all the way around taking little sections. marked out now um, and so now I'm going to take my fabric shears and kind of cut around where the edge of that pink line is if you can see like whatever circle uh, is going to connect all of those little corners. Alright, 
So now you just have this little edge left. All the excess is gone. So the first way that you uh, can finish off a hoop is you don't need any extra fabric for it. You can take some spare embroidery floss if you have it, um, or you can take some typical uh, sewing thread that's on a spool. Um, thread your needle and then do a gathering stitch all the way around if you watched the running stitch video um, You may have heard a little shout out to like people who know how to hand sew garments But a running stitch is basically just a gathering stitch So what you would do is you would do a running stitch all the way around uh, with two strands of thread or floss um, Making those like relatively close together closer together than these I'd say um, But not not too actually that's probably, that's probably a good amount away. Um, you can make the stitches a little bigger though, um, just so it covers a little more surface area. And then when you're done with that, you can pull it all tight. Um, so it like kind of cinches in like that, just like, oh, and then you uh, knot off there, keeping that all as tight as possible. Um, so that's the first way you can do it. If you don't have um, an extra piece of fabric or a spare, um, a scrap piece of fabric big enough for your hoop, um, that's usually a good way to go. Usually though, I like to take a second piece of fabric. Um, this is just like a scrap piece of fabric I stole from my college's <laughs> um, scrap fabric fi uh, pile. Um, I just have a lot of it and I don't usually like to use it for um, embroidery. It's just so thin and see-through. Um, and usually for backing fabric, I like to use something darker. I have a lot of like t-shirt scraps from like t-shirts that I've cropped. Um, I'll use like what I've cropped um, to be the backing fabric. I'm gonna mark where like the, um, the hoop sits. Taking off the hoop um, and then I'm going to take, uh, just like layer them on like that and then put, put it back. Um, and I'm gonna pull it tight so that the edges all hit where they did uh, with, or at least close to, with, um, with the lines we just drew on. And usually I like to do this before I cut the edges um, just to make it easier to pull so you have a little bit more, but I wanted to um, mention the, the first method uh, without a backing piece first. So normally I would have a little bit more to pull on, um, but she is all set and ready to go. I'm gonna retighten with the screwdriver. Um, and she's tight and ready to go. Yeah, that's a nice little drum sound. So next we are going to, um, now that all of this is in place, um, a, a thing that you could do at this point, take a regular hand iron, or I like to use a straightener personally. I never use it for my hair, I'm finding. So I like to take a straightener or a, a regular iron and just kind of like go over the whole thing. I would recommend that maybe before putting it back in the hoop, but you know, sometimes it happens where like you missed a spot. I just like go over it, get rid of, all of the fabric uh, marker or pen, the, the friction pen, get that all off. But I, I'm still gonna have all this up just cause like it's a sampler and you should know what all of these things are. So now that you have your backing piece, this is part of the reason why I don't usually like to, light, to use a lighter piece of fabric for the backing, but I mean, it really doesn't matter because uh, it's, gonna, you, it's gonna sit on your wall. Like you're not gonna be able to see it. So now that this is all set, you have this part trimmed down. I would say uh, that there are two methods that I like to use. I like to use the latter most, um, but the first one is you're just gonna cut both of them flesh to the hoop. And so it just kind of ends in a little frayed little spot. The second way though, is just cutting this backing piece of fabric flush to the hoop. So that's the one that we're gonna go with today. So we're going to take our fabric shears and just kind of get as close to the hoop as possible without cutting our, you know, little, little front piece here. Um, and just go all the way around, trying to get that as close as possible. So now all 
all that is set to go. She is pretty, pretty close to the hoop there. And now we're going to take our fabric shears again, and we're just going to cut the little uh, front piece into little segments just to keep it as uh, tight as possible. But I'm just kind of like vibing and cutting little segments into this. They don't have to be even or straight or whatever. Um, and then you're going to take a hot glue gun or you can take Mod Podge or you could take um, tacky glue. Hot glue is my favorite, it's the most forgiving. Um, except when you burn yourself. Um, so we are going to take our hot glue. I think this is warm enough now. And you're just going to put glue all along this like top edge of the inside hoop, if you can see. Just not like here on the inside, but like all, not here, but like on the top of it. So, uh, and then you're just gonna go like a couple of little segments down. I'm probably gonna stop around there for this first pass. And then you're gonna fold it like so. Just kind of keep going down each little section. That's what I mean about like hot glue being forgiving is like you can just reheat and replace the fabric where you need it to be um, if it didn't work out the first time. Take off extra little hot glue strands. But there you have it. She is all finished. That is what the back looks like. Um, that's why I had you cut like to the end there, um, is that is where it sits most cleanly. So there you have it, a finished embroidery hoop. Um, that is how you do all of the basics for embroidery. Uh, thank you for joining me for this tips and tricks video. Um, and to see how you do all of these stitches, check out all of their individual videos. These are the ones that I use most frequently. Um, and you likely will too if you get my kits or patterns uh, from my Etsy shop. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see all of the beautiful creations that you make. Uh, if you make one of my kits, tag me at Oud Embroidery on Instagram or Facebook. I would love to see all of the beautiful things that you create. Have a great time on your embroidery journey. Bye everyone.